Welcome back to another special Friday edition of the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Yes, this is the third episode in one day, and there's still more to come, people. So be sure to tune in at two and at four. Today, actually right now, we're sitting down and we're talking to Dar Zuck, who is the Calgary Board of Education School Board Trustee Candidate for Ward 12 and 14. If they can shorten that title up a bit, I could be very appreciative. But Dar, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Chris, I really appreciate the time for uh, you found to, to do this. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, no, I, I love chatting with people and I love chatting with people about candidates and campaigns and elections. Dar, you are running for school board trustee. My first question out of the gate for any candidate that comes on my show is, where's your sense of duty to serve come from? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. I think my, uh, my family has always, uh, through our cultural and, and uh, spiritual groups, we've always been right in center. Uh, I've, uh, man, in my younger lives, before I was married, I was always out volunteering and, and helping out. It's just, just a part of life. Now in 2021, as I said in the opening introduction, you have decided to run mm -hmm. for school board trustee, Ward 12 and 14. Uh, yeah. You can give back in many different ways through volunteerism, through nonprofits, but you decided to put your name on the ballot. What was that decision based on? I, I already volunteer in a lot of organizations across Calgary, uh, but uh, for this, uh, I've got three kids. My youngest is in kindergarten this year, uh, and then I've got a, a, my daughters are in grade two and four. And so uh, last election, uh, they were still, well, I guess my son was just born, and so uh, these things hadn't crossed my mind. Um, for me, I want my kids to be in a place where they see success that's beyond uh, what I had. And I think that's, that's a wish for most, most parents. Uh, but I, I want to make sure that the Calgary uh, school system is going to prepare them uh, to be successful when they, when they graduate, when they get out. And, uh, and uh, that's my hope for them, for sure. Now, now the, the honest to goodness uh, follow-up question to, to that is, is it not now? <laughs> It's a range. That's a good question, Christopher. You know, I, um, I, I'm an entrepreneur, small business guy. I speak to a lot of parents around this city here uh, that have big hopes and dreams for their kids. Uh, and then I spend a lot of time seeing great things across this, uh, this, this world. You know, we, um, uh, there is this grade 11 student in the Netherlands. And, and I mean, this is way off in, in the, uh, on one edge of the spectrum, but this grade 11 student in the Netherlands uh, decided that he and his class were gonna launch a satellite into space. And they did it for about $30,000. I think here in Alberta, we've got some really amazing parents. We've got some really amazing incubators. We've got world-class universities, amazing parents with, with stuff going on. And yet we've got a lot of kids that are unemployed when they gotta get out of school. And I, I think there's a gap there that can really be bridged and we gotta do that through the CB. So yeah, we got some success, but I, I think there's a lot more to be found there. And I think that's what we gotta shoot for. So before we start talking about what we can shoot for, let's talk about what you're hearing, because as the next school board trustee for Ward 12 and 14, I'm assuming you have been talking to parents of kids who are going through the school system right now. What are the concerns yes. that people are bringing forward to you right now, and how are you wanting to address them if elected on October 18th? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Uh, there's a range I hear uh, from a uh, lot of immigrant uh, families here in 12 and 14, uh, where uh, their family values are, are not being supported. Filipino people, I remember one guy I spoke that to at the door and his biggest concern was that his uh, Filipino family has traditions, uh, cultural traditions, 
and uh, what was being taught in the school was contrary. I, I mean, even things as simple as the Canadian Food Guide. And I think we've got to be sensitive uh, to those uh, sorts of things. Uh, I talk to, I get emails from uh, dads in, in uh, wards 12 and 14, where they're really concerned that uh, even though, uh, in this case, his daughter uh, gets good grades, uh, he's concerned that uh, she's having uh, trouble with math and uh, poor spelling and grammar. Uh, and he wants to remove his, his daughter from CB and, and put her in a, in a different place. So there's, there's definitely gaps there. I talk to older guys, guys that have been around for Alberta forever, 75, 80. They, he says that, you know, when he uh, has, uh, has people that he hired for his company, uh, kids out of school, um, they're unable to make presentations or properly articulate their ideas. And some of that comes to experience. Uh, but uh, I, I think people have an expectation of the CB. Uh, and some of those, you know, we've got great passionate people at the CB. I'm, I'm certainly not knocking. It's a great institution. Uh, but I am also uh, hearing people that are concerned that uh, when their kids come out the other end, uh, they're not as prepared as they should be to, to find success. And, uh, and so those are certainly, you know, there, there's the common things as well, masks and curriculum and, and things like that. But uh, the ones that really stick out to me is, is parents that have uh, dream, hopes for their kids and they're concerned that when they get out the other end, uh, they're not, they're, they're not gonna be as successful as they would hope. Now, uh, the, uh, the reason I love my show is because I take my directions from you. Usually it's the other way around. The host is the one who's dictating the, the way that the story goes. But for me, it's what you say. And I want to talk about that dad you just mentioned there, the dad of the daughter who's struggling in math and spelling. And he's thinking about taking his child out of the public education and going to another school system or to another school in general. How does the school board trustee fix that issue? How does the school board trustee, if elected on October 18th, help parents realize that, you know what, we can do better, we will do better, just bear with us for one term and we will make sure your daughter does get that proper education that they need? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm surprised by how many people I meet at the doors that have their kids in charter uh, schools or private schools. And as you know, it takes an enormous amount of effort to start and maintain a private school or charter school, in addition to all the additional fundraising, because they are funded at a much lower level. And yet these parents, they go out and do this. Uh, and so I think that speaks to the, uh, the concern and the, uh, the hopes that the parents have that they would take that step. I, I think we as uh, CB, as a school system, have to look uh, more closely at their charter schools, see what they're doing uh, right, see why the parents are, are going in there and, and make some of those choices. And whether that's uh, smaller class sizes, which I know is a, a regular uh, topic uh, within parents and within our communities, or uh, being more flexible in the the programs and what's being taught, and uh, and and looking at the needs of our communities a little bit closer. I think there definitely is opportunities for this particular parent. Uh, I I would say number one, hey jump into your school council, get involved, speak to the principal, be involved, be at every school council meeting, find out what the other parents are, are saying, because uh, there's definitely an issue there, uh, but it's, uh, it's an issue that can be resolved. We've got passionate, passionate speakers, and uh, not speakers, but teachers and uh, competent uh, teachers at the CB. And it's, uh, um, there's a gap there that, that definitely can be fixed. I, I perused your website because I, I enjoy websites. I enjoy looking at websites and I enjoy I, I enjoy reading platforms so I can get an idea of what who you are and what I'm going to be talking about. And I, I love buzzwords because I like asking the question about said buzzword. And on your website, which is for a stronger alberta.ca, which will be linked in the show notes, you say fiscal responsibility is one of the key things that you want to address if elected on October 18th. 
First off, yeah. and this is the first question before we continue on, what does fiscal responsibility mean to you? Well, I think that means we're uh, taking care of the money that's entrusted to us and using it in a way that best serves uh, the students. A trustee is, is here to uh, represent the parents, the students, and the communities. And we want to make sure that that money that's entrusted to us is, uh, is used in the best possible way. Looking at the role of the school board trustee, you will be given money from the province that is given that is gotten got from property taxes and school board taxes in the city of Calgary. How can the city, how can the school board, the Calgary Board of Education, be more responsible with its money in today's world? That's a good question. I think there's a couple things we need to uh, relook at what success is defined at. Um, what what we want for our kids. I think that's number one because that helps us set the goals. Uh, I think we need to push a greater percentage of, uh, of the money that's entrusted down to the local classrooms and uh, for the use of the local teachers. Uh, we've got uh, bigger class sizes than we want. That's always the case. Um, but what it comes down to is a class size of 23 students is funded at ten and a half thousand dollars per student per year and that comes out to uh over a quarter million dollars and uh, you're a businessman i'm a, a business guy we've got a lot of business uh people parents and a quarter million dollars is uh is is a fair bit of money that should be able to fund a lot of things the question is is where, where are those funds going and uh, how do we get more of it into the local classroom so it can, uh, it can serve the class, it can serve the kids and it can give a, a better experience on the other end. I'm just playing devil's advocate here because I, 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 you're the first person to talk about this and I, I love when people bring mm -hmm. something new to me because I get to learn like my listeners and my viewers, where is the money going? That seems like a lot of money. Where is it going right now? Like, who? Why haven't we well, been asking this question? Well, it's okay. So CB CB is a big organization. It's a large organization. It's been around for a long time. It's got lots of competent, passionate um, professionals in it. But like any bureaucracy, sometimes we get offline. I, I think trustees for decades now have been exa asking exactly this question. And um, they, they, they come in with good intentions and they leave and this, this issue remains. So it's certainly not an easy uh, issue. Trustees for decades, good people, competent people have been trying to um, uh, crack this nut and haven't been able to do it. Uh, charter schools make, uh, it's under $6,000 per student compared to uh, 10 and a half. Francophone students get uh, 13,600, so even more. Uh, charter schools, they have to do a lot more fundraising, but they're able to do it on uh, a little bit more than half of what the, the public system uh, gets. And so it is a big question, like what, wh where is that money going? It's a lot of money, a quarter million dollars for 23 students. And some of that, you know, gets to pay a principal and support staff and things like that, but there should be enough to fund the classroom well. And that's what Alberta Ed says, there should be enough. And one of the big things that the next school board will have, the school, like the, the board of trustees will have to look at is that financials because uh, people are struggling right now. We have to make, we're, we are probably not gonna see an increase to funding for the school board, uh, the CBE for some time due to COVID-19. Revenues are down. <laughs> Oil prices are down, they're coming up right now, but we are not where we were 10 years ago. So how can we be uh, fiscal, uh, fiscal stewards of that funding that we currently get? And how do you see your role as the school board trustee for Ward 12 and 14 to ensure that money is spent properly? Yeah, that's a good question. And that's uh, number one, uh, we're going to have to ask a lot of questions. Uh, we're also going to have to set some guidelines as to what the ratio between uh, funds uh, that we get from the province, what portion of that goes to administration, 
uh, and support staff and what portion goes to the, the local classroom. Um, I, it's, I, I think we really have to start there is let's measure, find out what percentage of that is going to the local school and the local classroom. And from there we can set some goals as how to shift more of that money over. I, I think, you know, uh, more broadly, uh, I think the funding model needs to change uh, as well. Uh, we do, I've spoken to teachers that have been teachers and have left the profession. I've spoken to teachers that have been there a long time. And they said that the job is getting much, much tougher. Over the last 20 year, years from what it was 20 years ago today, it's a much tougher job. And there's lots of things that need to get sorted out as to um, how we deliver better education and a better workplace for, for our teachers and our, the folks that are in their local schools. I want to talk about the first topic that you brought up was, which was the communities that are, are that mm. make up our great city of Calgary. Um, we have a very diverse uh, city. I think you alluded to it with the family values that people bring to the city that they want taught at their schools. And sometimes it may not uh, mesh well with what the school board is uh, teaching. Mm -hmm. You will agree and I will agree that this city is a diverse city. How do you please everyone in such a diverse city? Well, you don't, you, you absolutely don't. Number one is you have to take, uh, you have to take it to the local school. You have to take it to the local classroom. You, you can't implement a policy that's, that's across the entire city because it is so diverse. Uh, one of the great things about our school system is the autonomy that a lot of principals have, that uh, they do have a strong voice for that local school. And, uh, you know, the, the other side of that coin is... I belong to residential associations. I'm on the board of residential associations on the board of other uh, community uh, groups in the in this city. And I speak to a lot of business people. And uh, this year I've been asking them, well, what about your local school? Can we do that at your local school? And it's completely off the radar for most of our communities, for most of our business people. Uh, the local school is just not there. And I, I think that's another big gap that we're missing uh, because as, as in other countries, in rural schools or in rural communities, the school is the center and the heart of the community. Everything happens there. Uh, after school programs, uh, the workshops, all this stuff is right at the heart of the community. But here in the CBE, for some reason, it's not, it's, it's way off on the side. And I, I think that's a big opportunity missed. And when we get the community and the school together, and that's gonna take a long time, uh, but then I think we can serve our communities better. We can teach more to the, uh, the, the unique aspects and the cultural differences of those local schools. Today, that's not happening. How do we do that? How, what's the first step? Because I, I agree with you. I agree. Like I'm from a rural community and I believe that the school was the heart of our community. Dances were there. If there was an event going on, it was there. Gar garage sales and yard sales and farmer's market were at the school's gyms. We enjoyed the school. When I moved to the city of Calgary, I've realized that the school is second. The school is second. It's everywhere else than the school. How do we change that attitude? Because it, while you and I can agree on it, there's a lot of people who don't. A lot of people agree that, you know what? The center of attention is their house and it's always gonna be their house. And they want their kids at their house all at, every night and they don't want them playing on the street because it might be unsafe. And that's a whole nother situation we could talk about, but let's not go there right now. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think I, I agree with you. And I think it's both. Uh, for some parents, their home is and should be the uh, center of attention. For a lot of parents, that's not an opportunity. And there should be a plan B. And I think that plan B is the school. Uh, there's, there's a definite cultural shift. I mean, the reason uh, the reason it is the way it is today is because there has been decisions made in the past to make it this way. 
and so I think number one, there has to be a conversation as to why it is this way. You know, as, as a trustee, the worst thing we can do is take an idea like this and say, okay, this is wrong. We're going to change We're going to change it. And it's going to look this way. So I, uh, number one, we've got to sit down with the principals. They're the authority in the schools. It's their building. Uh, they're uh, responsible for the programming and, and uh, ask them, like, well, why is it like this? What if? Uh, I think the trustees uh, need to be the ones reaching out to the community. So we've got spiritual organizations, uh, spiritual traditions with a lot of our families, and they, they vary from community to community. I think we've got to get uh, those, uh, those, those leaders in touch with the principals, in touch with the vice principals, meeting the teachers, having a relationship there so they can discuss things. Because that's, I think, number one. The same thing goes with the community associations and the programs and the, uh, the uh, essentially a chamber of commerce in our local neighborhoods and our, uh, and, and our communities. And uh, these folks have to get together in a, in a common way. You know, I, uh, one of the uh, school councils I'm, I'm on in, in Ward 12, uh, the vice uh, principal wanted to do something on High Street in, uh, in Mackenzie Town. And uh, no, one, no one had any... Uh, way to figure out how do we do something on high street in Mackenzie town uh but i through my my business dealings and some of my volunteer activities i knew the property manager that took care of that whole area uh and we have to have more of those relationships we have to have people that are connected that can put people together so they can talk about their ideas and figure out how to get stuff uh going that's that's what we need more of we need more people connecting one way or the other to, to know who they are and what they want to do. I agree wholeheartedly. I, I'm just cautious of time here because I just want to make yes. sure that we get to all everything that we need to get to. I want to talk about one last thing before we move on, and that is uh, parental cons consent. It is on your website, so I'm okay with talking about it because it is mm -hmm. one of your solutions that you want. What do you mean by parental consent and how has the CBE not been doing this or doing this in your opinion? Yeah, it, it's a good question. Um, as a parent, we're all very, very protective of our, our kids. We've got hopes and dreams for our kids. We're concerned when they, when they bump a knee or they have a fight with their, their friend in school. Um, my kids are young. And so um, my experience with them is limited compared to a lot of parents out there. Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, parents are the best uh, protection for their kids. They'll be the best advocates when something is gone wrong or um, their kids are, are hurt mentally or emotionally uh, and are best uh, there to resolve it. So uh, parents will always be the, the best advocates uh, for their, their kids. Uh, when there's a decision made as to uh, what happens to kids in school, I think particularly in the younger uh, grades, uh, parents need to have uh, um, ha have to have an option. I, I've been I just did the video on my YouTube channel about uh, grade two physical education because my uh, my daughter's in grade two. And, uh, and sexual education as well on that, because that's, that's the thing I think a lot of parents are concerned about, especially with all the media that's come over the years for early uh, primary school stuff. And I had some parents, uh, uh, not parents, but teachers comment on those videos. And they said, you know, for any topics like that, we absolutely reach out to the uh, parents uh, we give them an option where they their kids can step away uh, and be involved in other um, uh, activities. And I think that's a that's an excellent example of what's happening in CB and what we want more of uh, is CB uh, needs to reach out, ask for the parents. And if the parents are like, no, I, uh, that doesn't fit well, uh, yeah. that there's some uh, other other alternatives and they do do a really good job of that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being honest about that. I know I threw it at you, but I just wanted to ask because sometimes 
key buzzwords are fun, but you want to dive into it. So thank you for being honest about what uh, that you parental consent meant for you. I want to turn now because I get again just cautious of time. I want to mm -hmm. turn to the future. October 19th, you wake up. You wake up on October 19th. You are the trustee elect for the Calgary Board of Education for Ward 12 and 14. What is priority one for you? Taking down signs across the city. <laughs> you were the uh, first we're to legally say that. Obligated. <laughs> Yeah, we're legally obligated. Uh, you know, I, I, I think some people talk about uh, teamwork and uh, reaching out to the other candidates. I, I about two months ago, sent a, an email out to every candidate that's running uh, in every other ward says, listen, I, I, I've i spoken to Mike Bradshaw, who's our, our incumbent. Well, he's not an incumbent. He's our current trustee. And I said, what's what's it, what does success look like and what what's going to make this uh, role successful and he absolutely said you got to have a good working relationship so i send an email out to everyone so that's um i think the opportunities are uh you know speaking i i've i've reached out multiple times to every school council in wards uh 12 and 14 to initiate that that relationship already and introduce myself uh alberta ed is is the big one uh, I want to hear, you know, CV is, uh, is strange to me, in, and I think for a lot of parents in that in 2000, when Lyle Olberg was our Minister of Education, he fired the whole bunch of them. And then in uh, spring of uh, 2020, 2020, yeah, last spring, spring 2020, uh, our current Minister of Education said, you guys better pull up your socks or you're gone. And, and those are nuclear options, and yet it's happened twice in the last 20 years. And I, I really want to find out what the expectation is for Alberta Ed and what is so wrong that they're looking at these nuclear options, because they're competent people in Alberta Ed as well. And uh, we've got to figure out how to line up uh, with the different levels of, of government uh, so that we are doing what's successful. Uh, what is intended for this organization. So that's that's the number one. Now, as a businessman yourself and as a businessman myself, I know that you have to put metrics into place to be successful. You have to say, I need to get X, Y, and Z done by this date, this date, and this date. And if I don't get them done, I'm not doing my job and I'm not being a successful business person. So I got to ask you this question, 100 days out, so February, 2022, what is going to be the metrics that you are going to put in place for yourself as the school board trustee to ensure that the first hundred days are a success? And then you can go back to the people of Ward 12 and 14 and say, hey, look, I've started the conversation with this. I started this. I started this process and we are moving forward. They're not done, but they're done. They're, they're started. What are the metrics you're putting in place for yourself? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, first, first hundred days is all about relationships. It's all getting to know the people around you, building, uh, building trust, and that's certainly within the board of trustees. It's certainly within the school councils. It's certainly the uh, the principals of the various schools and vice principals. And I think it's it's uh, identifying those passionate people within the organization that that have uh, that they're pouring their life into this. Uh, I think my metric, honestly, is uh, like you. I've got a, a podcast show that I do. I've got over 400 videos on my YouTube channel. And uh, I, I, my metric is uh, having uh, interviews with some of these amazing people. So not only do I get to know them, uh, but our communities get to know them and uh, there's some level of trust because it's, it's all about the relationships at this point and more people need to know more people within the community. So it's, it's how many YouTube videos. And I, I, would, like, I would like to say, I think a, a, a good option, uh, a good target is, uh, is two to three per month over that 100, uh, 100 days. So I'm going to say, what is that? That's... Uh, Five, so 15. Oh, man, worse than that. 15, 15 YouTube videos with uh, with thought leaders within the CBE. Wow. 
Well, you're going to be taking away some some of my people that I'm going to bring bring in on. So I'm not going to I'm not going to listen to yours. I'm only going to listen to mine. I joke. <laughs> I'll listen to yours as well. But Thank I got to ask Thank I, I got to ask this question now because this is the important one. Take a few <laughs> minutes. Talk to the people of Board Twelve and Fourteen who are listening, who are watching this right now. Why should you be their next school board trustee? Well, num number one, I intend to be here for a while. If I if I win the support of the uh, the parents and wards, uh, twelve and, and fourteen, my commitment is is twelve years. If you like what I'm doing, I'm going to be back next election and the election after that. My my boys in kindergarten this year, and I I I, I truly uh, would like to be uh, CBE to be a place where in he when he's in grade ten and he's in grade eleven. He has the curiosity to say, I want to put a satellite into space. And the kids and the teachers around him say, I think we can do this together. That, that's what I, I believe we can do. And it's going to take that long to do it. Uh, and we've got the, the amazing people in, in the communities of, uh, of Calgary, our uh, amazing oil gas engineers and parents and the affluence and the amazing universities. That I think we can get this done. It's going to take time, but that's that's what I want my son, the environment for my son to be when he's in grade uh, 10 and 11. Dar, I want to thank you so much for doing this. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm going to ask you one last time. I didn't actually ask you beforehand, so I'm going to ask you for the first time and the last time. But there's probably someone right now yelling at my screen, yelling at yelling at their car stereo, yelling at their YouTube channel, watching this and going, why didn't you ask him about this question? How can people reach out to you and ask the question before Monday? Yeah, for sure. My cell phone is on my sign. So if you find a sign like that, my cell phone number is on that. It's also, if you Google my name, you'll find me everywhere. There's a lot of stuff on me and it's all got my contact information. So super, stick it in, in Google and you'll, you'll absolutely find me. Uh, otherwise, it's the website you'll find at the bottom of uh, Chris's YouTube channel here and uh, all my contact information is there as well. Dar, I want to thank you so much for doing this. It's been an honor and a pleasure. And now I'm going to, uh, as, I, as I've said, at the 10 o'clock hour and the 8 o'clock hour, and now I'm going to say at the 12 o'clock hour, get out and vote. Vote, vote, mm -hmm. vote. If you do not vote, you do not have the right to complain for the next four years. Our ballot is long. For those who have gone out in advance vote, you know it is long. There is two pages to it. Uh, vote for the mayor, vote for the school board trustee, vote for the council, vote for the fluoride issues, vote for everything and vote. Yes. Just get out and vote. I can't say that enough. Go ahead. And one more thing too. Uh, join your school council for your local school. They're looking for uh, passionate parents to come out and be involved and they need you. So come out and be part of your school council. Thank you. That is, I, uh, you're the first person to say that who I've interviewed for school board. So yes, get out and get involved. Get involved. Mm -hmm. Take 90 minutes out of your day and get involved. Dar, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and pleasure. It's been a pleasure on this side too. Thanks for finding the time, Chris.